we're looking now at robust tracking control. So when we looked at the control before, we basically were primarily concerned about either st stabilizing the system or else just putting the eigenvalues wherever we want. That had nothing to do with actually uh, tracking, for example, a specific signal. So that is um, a little bit different problem. We didn't design for tracking. And so in general, we will not get good tracking. And we saw that in the last uh, exam uh, practice problems. So in general, tracking and disturbance rejection are the kind of thing that we would really like for a system. So in terms of tracking, we have a desired reference signal we want our output to follow. Okay, that's the tracking problem. The disturbance problem is the fact that we may have a disturbance signal that's entering our system that we we want our system not to follow. Okay, so we have one signal we want our system to follow. We have another signal we don't want our system to follow. So, for example, if you think of a cruise control in an automobile, cruise control, the desire is that you set the speed at some value and the systems, uh, the, the car stays at that speed regardless of whether you're going uphill or downhill. So uphill or downhill would be the disturbances. So you want your system to not respond to those disturbances, but you do want it to respond to the, to the set point value of speed that you want it to be at. So you have the dual problem of tracking and disturbance rejection. So that's the basic idea behind what we're doing here. All right. So given a state model, notice now we have an additional input, disturbance input. Okay, and we're, we're assuming our system is strictly proper, that is, no D matrix. And that's a pretty uh, common assumption. Um, it, it definitely simplifies certain things. We've seen before how the D does when you do feedback and stuff, it kind of complicates things. But uh, we're gonna, so we're gonna assume that uh, for now. And um, it turns out we can, we can come back and, and redesign, get the design when we do have a D term, but it's very common to have the D to be zero. So. We have our two signals that we want to track, our reference signal and our disturbance. Okay, and um, so here I've presented them in the Laplace domain. So for example, uh, I could have a unit step here as our reference signal. I could have, say, a sinusoid here for our disturbance signal. And then V is the summation of the two. Now, in general, I could actually have multiple disturbance signals entering from different directions. I could have, um, and you know, so here I'm considering a single output system. Single output meaning my, my Y is just a single variable. So the reference we're trying to track is just a single signal. My system itself could actually have multiple inputs. So that's, we're not restricted here by that. So the main concern is multiple outputs, uh, that we only have a single output we're working with. The disturbance could have multiple signals if we want. Um, in which case N of S would be a polynomial matrix, but D of W is the thing that we're looking at. And so he, here, when we do this summation, the main point of this summation is to get DV, the denominator, which is um, the least common denominator, okay? So between DW and DR. So that's really what we're looking for. We actually don't care about NV. Uh, it turns out we're gonna kind of ignore the NV anyway, um, but DV is the thing that we're looking for. So. This approach that we're looking at here involves something called the internal model principle. So the internal model principle says this, in a unity feedback configuration, exact asymptotic tracking can be achieved if and only if the following three conditions are satisfied. So exact asymptotic tracking is what we want from, from our problem, okay? So we want our output signal to track our reference signal. So first of all, the plant or the controller must contain a model of the tracking signal. In general, our plant will not include a model of the tracking signal, and so our controller must, must include that. Second is no transmission zero at the reference frequency. So what is that talking about? No transmission zeros at the... So your reference signal. Suppose your reference signal is a sinusoid at a given frequency. No transmission zero of our system means that our system itself doesn't have a notch in the, in the frequency response at that same frequency, okay? So 
basically, if you have a frequency and you have a notch at that same frequency and you try to apply that signal, you basically get zero or, well, you don't get out what you're wanting to get, get out, okay? So basically, what this condition says is we're not trying to track a signal that our system cannot track, physically track, okay? And so that corresponds with a zero at a particular frequency. That's basically a restriction of our system, but it's a, it's a, it, it happens. So basically, this condition says you're not trying to track a system your system cannot track, cannot physically track. That's a fundamental limitation. And so that's actually not extremely restrictive for this problem because it's just is reasonable. It's very reasonable that you would have no transmission zero. Now, this other thing about the model, well, that's something else. Also, the plant must be stabilizable and detectable. So that's an important thing. So all of these are actually very reasonable assumptions. And if anyone is not satisfied, then basically we cannot solve this problem. We cannot track. Okay, so these are the requirements for this, for this asymptotic tracking. So now we use our model and we we put our, our this rational function into the controllable canonical form. And the main part of the controllable canonical form that we're concerned about is the AM and BM. Okay, so that's the controllable canonical form. And in doing so, we know that the pair AM and BM is controllable. Okay, so, so we actually only use AM and BM for the internal model. Here is the internal model. So it has its own state, XM dot, or XM, XM dot is given by this equation, AM XM plus BM times R minus Y. Okay, so this is the tracking error. It's actually taking into account the tracking error. All right. So notice that AM includes a model because it uses DV, which uses both DR and DW. It actually incorporates a model of both the tracking sig reference signal and also the disturbance. It includes both of those. So we now have the original state equation, and we now have the state of our model. The augmented system is a sig system where we've combined both states. So XM and X, uh, X and XM now is our new state. So here is our new state equation. So we have a new A matrix. Here B tilde is what multiplies our control signal. B bar is what multiplies our reference signal. And G tilde is what re multiplies our, our uh, disturbance. Okay, so in terms of control design, A tilde and B tilde is what we're going to be needing to use. Notice that A tilde, so this again comes about because we have our reference model in cascade or in series with our plant. And so we end, so we've seen this, this kind of A tilde uh, ma matrix before, or when we um, combined two state models together in series. Okay, and notice then that um, um, the eigenvalues of this matrix are the eigenvalues of A and the eigenvalues of AM. So in the augmented system, we want to use a state feedback. But that's where we're going to start. Okay. Ultimately, we want to get to output feedback, but we start with the state feedback to see how that works. So remember now we have two sets of states. We have our, the original states and we have the XM states. Okay. And so we actually have a gain for each of those. We can combine those into a single uh, gain matrix K tilde that multiplies our state. Okay, And so K tilde can be divided into the two parts, KS and KM. And now this is the, con this is the structure of our overall control system once we've applied that. Okay, So here's our system. The output of that X goes into KS okay, and forms U. Our model receives R minus Y, and it this is our model, AM and BM is the part of the model, and KM then is multiplied in order to form U. Our disturbance enters the system, our reference enters the system, and notice that all of this stuff is wrapped around a unity, around that is wrapped a unity feedback. So we, we have a unity feedback configuration, we have a tracking model, so our, this is in a sense like our controller, and uh, so th we, we have everything we need to do to satisfy the internal model principle, okay? And so the internal model principle says that if our system is stable then in this configuration, we will have asymptotic tracking and disturbance rejection, so both.
So, so not only will we have that we'll be tracking, but we can also reject a disturbance. Okay, so for now, ig ignoring the disturbance, this is our augmented system when we apply the state feedback gain. And so no we notice our new A matrix is A tilde plus B tilde K tilde. And we want to know how does the controllability of A tilde and B tilde relate to, and so this is the state feedback gain. We know some, some relationships between state feedback and controllability. And so what about controllability of A tilde, B tilde? And so we have this result here. The, the pair A tilde, B tilde is controllable if and only if these three conditions. First condition is the eight, that the original system is controllable. And that's very reasonable um, because we can't expect if A tilde and B tilde is not controllable that suddenly applying this controller is going to somehow make the overall system controllable. Okay, uh, that's not that would not be reasonable. So the fact that A B is required to be controllable is very reasonable. A M and B M that's our that's our model. We saw that if we use the controllable canonical form, then this will automatically be controllable. So it's not even this is not really even a restriction at all. And finally, there is no transmission zero at the frequencies of, of the reference. And so we saw this condition in the internal model principle. And so again, it's very reasonable that this would be. Um, but it turns out you can actually show that this condition is actually required for the controllability of A tilde, B tilde. And the reason it's required is because of the fact you have the series in interconnection between the model and the plant. And AM has the, has the, um, the frequencies of the reference signal in it. So that's the poles of the model. The zeros of the system then cannot cancel or we, we lose controllability. Okay, so um, so that's that's the situation that we have here. All right, so these are the conditions under which we have controllability. So what happens if AB is not controllable? Well, we have this next result. The pair A tilde, B tilde is stabilizable if and only if AB is stabilizable and AM, BM is controllable. And again, finally, the no transmission zero issue. So, so really, this again, this guy is is pretty much a given because of the way we choose AM and BM, and this guy is given just. Otherwise, we can't even solve the problem anyway, and so really, the bottom line is, these two are stabilizable if and only if the original system was stabilizable, which again is very reasonable. So, so really, we only need stabilizability to get a stable. Servo, uh, a ser uh, controller. Now, an open research question is how to pick K tilde or K for good performance or good robustness. That's, there are still some open questions there. So if you're interested in doing controls research, here's, some, here's an example of an area the, of uh, research. So the approach we've been talking about here in terms of designing this controller, this de control design has a name. It's called the robust servo mechanism. The robustness comes, comes from the fact that we want to um, reject a disturbance. The servo mechanism part is the part where we're wanting to track a given signal. So these are the steps that we follow in order to form the controller. We first check the system for transmission zeros. Okay, If, that's, if, that's, if there are no transmission zeros at the desired uh, frequency, then we move on and, and find a controllable state model for the reference. We form the reference signal. We obtain a controllable state model. We form the tilde matrices, A tilde, B tilde. We compute the state feedback gain, K tilde, for the augmented system. And then we apply the state feedback control. And so at, we can go through and show that it, all of this works for state feedback. And we'll give an example in our practice problems to see this. The question now remains, will it work for output feedback? 